Do you remember that scene in The Hangover when Bradley Cooper's character's on the phone with Doug's fiance and he says, we effed up. Well, I'm here to tell you I effed up. Last week, my week one trending Tuesday takes were so cold they could live comfortably here in Minnesota in the middle of January. And speaking of Minnesota, this trending Tuesday after week two, we're starting with the Minnesota quarterback, boy, was I wrong. Kirk Cousins is the same old Kirk Cousins. And Minnesota, they have not changed at all. So when it comes to Kirk Cousins cards, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't see them going up, maybe a little bit down. They're going to stay right about average, kind of like his play. He's just kind of average. And I think we saw that after two weeks. He's up, he's down, but his cards are going to stay right about here. So my recommendation to you, unless you're a Kirk Cousins fan, I see no reason in collecting his cards, especially if you're looking for values to go up or down. But we're looking for cards to go up, right? So I'm saying hold off on buying any Kirk Cousins cards, and that's different from my week one take. So there's one of my F-ups. Another one we're talking about is another loser. And I said I was a buyer. I don't think I'm a buyer anymore, and that is Russell Wilson. I just don't see it happening in Denver. I don't know if his cards are going to go up much more than they already are. In fact, they might even lose value. Um, he's in a rough situation in Denver, partially because their coach can't figure out the game management. I think it's really impacting the whole team, but letting Russ cook is not happening in Denver. So I am uh, flipping my... Week one take and telling you I effed up and I am not buying Russell Wilson. Um, let's talk about some other losers. And, and uh, when I talk about losers, I'm talking about card values. Um, the major one is Trey Lance. So if you are a Trey Lance collector and you were hoping for him to be a breakout performer this year, his season comes to a screeching halt with a broken ankle. So his cards are plummeting right now. Um, I would recommend holding. Um, there's no use right now in selling. Uh, you're going to sell for bargain basement prices. And maybe this kid comes back and has a great comeback story. But, I mean, his cards are down so much right now. You'd lose a lot of money. Now, with that said, maybe this kid never comes back. And so his cards could become uh, e even more worthless. So... I don't know. I'm I'm holding a couple of his cards right now and hoping for a great comeback story. He's a young kid, a lot of potential, and everybody likes a comeback story. So Trey Lance, season over, cards are plummeting. I'm holding his cards right now. He was a guy I was kind of watching from afar last week. This now I'm completely avoiding. I'm just putting his cards aside that I have and I won't touch it until he's back on the field. The four guys I told you to buy, 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 or hold, hold, hold. You know, the, the, the elite of the elite, they showed why they are the elite. That's the Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and Justin Herbert all performed extremely well in their second week in a row. I think those guys are still the class of the quarterbacks and have the potential of being MVP slash Super Bowl contenders. A couple guys that uh, I said that I was buying as well, or one of the guys I should say, um, was Joe Burrow. This poor guy, Cincinnati, protect him better. My goodness. Joe Burrow has all of the tools. He has all of the weapons to be an extremely, extremely successful quarterback. We saw this last year, but the team needs to protect him. Um, I'm still buying him low if you can find it. Um, I think the one thing that I will say is the Super Bowl hangover is real and the lack of protection for him is real. So the risk for injury is real. So I can see why some people are dumping his cards. But I think over the long term, I think Joe Burrow has a lot of star quality to him and the potential to be a superstar is there. So I'm buying low. Another guy I'm buying low, but I'm starting to see his prices creep up. He is the quarterback of the AFC South leading Jacksonville Jaguars. Yes, Trevor Lawrence is starting to look like the real deal that we thought he was when he was drafted number one overall. And I will give a lot of that credit to A, his uh, God-given ability and his work ethic, right? And Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson is a fantastic teacher of quarterbacks. And so I will say this, 
Jacksonville is on the rise. Trevor Lawrence is a guy I'm looking to buy. But again, like I said, his prices are starting to creep a little bit. So finding value where he is right now is a little bit more of a challenge. Now, I do own several Trevor Lawrence cards, and I'm still kind of wondering, thinking, what should I be doing with those? For right now, I'm holding. Right now, I'm holding. I think he has great long-term potential, and his cards could go up. And I think he's one of those guys, too, that has star quality outside of the football field, and meaning he could be, you know, endorsements and whatnot. And so uh, I think he has really superstar quality uh, waiting for him. So I'm holding his cards personally. All right, less guy. Uh, some other guys I'm less interested in than I was uh, than I was in week one. These were guys I was just kind of watching from afar, but I think I have a closer look and a closer idea of what I'm going to do. Justin Fields he had a rough one against Green Bay in week two. It just kind of reminded me how far off this guy is from being a franchise quarterback. Super, super talented. But he just isn't an accurate passer, and I wonder if that's going to plague him eventually. And um, still not really moving on his cards. I'm not buying. I'm not selling. Um, if you do have a market for, uh, for selling these cards and you feel like you can get really good value, I recommend selling. I just don't see that happening uh, this year for him. And maybe long term he can figure it out, but I think accuracy is going to be his issue. And if you can't be an accurate NFL quarterback, you are not going to be an NFL quarterback for long. Another guy in that same boat is Davis Mills. A um, lot of potential saw, a little bit of uh, arm talent that we uh, you know, didn't know existed, especially from an NFL caliber style of offense. I just don't know. I don't know if it's Houston. Again, same with Justin Fields. I don't know if it's just the Bears, but... Both of those quarterbacks are just looking at, like they don't have the it factor to be franchise quarterbacks. I know they're extremely young, but um, not really doing much with those guys' cards and definitely not buying. So uh, holding some of the cards that I have, not getting them graded, I don't feel like that's adding a whole lot of value or if there's a big market for those two guys. So those are guys I'm just less interested in after two weeks. All right, back to my man I effed up is these are the players I said I was staying away from or collecting from afar. Tua Tagliavoa. I don't even know if I pronounce his name right. I just call him Tua, and he just calls me an idiot for not uh, considering him to be a top uh, front flight quarterback. Um, yeah, six touchdowns, comeback win, just absolutely massive. He was fantastic and he has me rethinking things and in a couple of reasons why um, he is distributing the ball to his playmakers as well as anyone and he has one of the best young up-and-coming coaches and so you pair those together there's a lot of excitement happening in Miami and they're winning 2-0 so I'm a little bit more bullish on Tua than I was before. Still watching with some skepticism, but after watching his week two performance, I think he's closer to stardom than he is bust. Like way closer to stardom than bust. And so a um, little more bullish on Tua. I think it's a good time to sell. I, I think a lot of people are bullish on Tua. So you can really sell high if you're looking to make some money. But if you want to hold these guys, uh, hold this guy's card, I think you're going to be uh, pleasantly surprised to see it either hold value or possibly increase value as well. Another guy, Jalen Hurts, pretty much the same situation. He's 2-0. Philadelphia is a fantastic team. They might be the best team in the NFC, and Jalen Hurts has a lot to do with it. I kind of came on here last week and said, you know, he, they're going to win, but it's not going to be because of him. They are going to win, and it's going to be because of him. They whooped up on the Minnesota Vikings. They made the Minnesota Vikings look really, really average. And so Jalen Hurts is a guy I'm a little bit more bullish on, and I think his cards are extremely high in value right now if you want to sell. But if you don't sell and you want to hold, I think they're still going to hold the value, and I think they're actually going to go up because I do like Philly, and I do like what they're doing. So I'm back to being bullish on Tua and Jalen, after saying I wasn't uh, really interested in those cards and I didn't think those values would change very much, so I effed up on those two guys. One guy I'm not quite ready to say I effed up on, but sure proved me wrong in week two was Kyler Murray. He had a fantastic second half and led the Cardinals to a second half victory, 
And a lot of it had to do with him and his individual talent and ability. So I think Kyler Murray is a guy that is going to grab attention just because he is so flashy. But over the long term, I don't know if this is something that's sustainable. So I'm not as bullish on him, but I did F up and say that this guy was basically washed and, you know, I'm not buying this guy because I think there is a huge market for Kyler Murray just because he is a, again, he's a superstar on on social media. Uh, his, his, his highlights grab attention. He's a sports center superstar, if you will. So um, I think there will always be a market for people, uh, uh, you know, uh, buying his cards. I think his cards right now are a sell in my book, a no brainer sell. But um, if you want to hold, I think they're going to hold some value. But uh, you know, definitely a sale right now or a seller right now. If you're uh, if you're holding his cards, um, like I said, I just don't know. I don't trust the Cardinals. That's part of it too, um, to have uh, success over the long term. But uh, no question, what Kyler did on Sunday was fantastic. So. Tua, Jalen, and Kyler, I apologize for um, saying that I, I effed up and I'm bullish on two out of the three. And Kyler, you know, I know your cards will continue to grow in value as long as you're on the field doing the special things that you do. Another guy I kind of effed up on was Aaron Rodgers. Boy, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on me. Whatever the saying is, shame on me for saying Aaron Rodgers was washed. You know, I will say this though about Aaron Rodgers. He will have success this year, but it's not necessarily going to be because Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is a fantastic quarterback, one of the best we've seen over the last 20 years. Don't get me wrong, but this Packers team is built a little bit differently. And this is kind of why I was a stay away or seller last week was I think the defense and the running game has to carry this Packers. Rodgers can't do this by himself. So I can see them having success. I can see Rodgers having some success as well throughout the season. But I think the Packers go based on their defense, based on their running game. And Rodgers is kind of working as that point guard, which is a little bit different role for him. But um, I, I'm kind of changing my tune. Okay, I effed up. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to have some value to hold throughout the year. And it might actually go up as well. So um, he might be a hold candidate for now and, and wait for a couple weeks until the Packers get this thing figured out, which they seem to do now every year. Last year was the exact same situation. Aaron Rodgers was so bad in week one and everybody's like, this is going to be a disaster. And he went on to win the MVP and the Packers were the best team in the NFC. Could that happen again this year? Yes, probably, very much likely. So Aaron Rodgers is in for a good season. I'm holding or selling. Um, and I think maybe you can buy some of Aaron Rodgers' cards uh, relatively cheap as well. He's not a guy who moves, um, that fluctuates. His prices don't fluctuate very, uh, very high or very low. They're just kind of there. But I think they're going to hold their value throughout the year. Um, lastly, some sneaky pickups, and I mentioned these guys last week as guys I was just kind of maybe looking at, watching, looking for numbered cards, some of their rookie autos and that sort of thing, because they're going to get an opportunity this year. And I still think those guys, there's a couple of guys on that list I think are going to get an opportunity. Kenny Pickett, I think his time comes in Pittsburgh. The folks in Pittsburgh are already calling for him. You heard the chants in the stands if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fans. They do not want Mitch Trubisky. They have seen enough of Mitch Trubisky after two weeks. So Kenny Pickett time in Pittsburgh could come sooner rather than later, especially if the fans get their way. And so those Kenny Pickett cards, I think, could uh, see a little bit of an increase in value. Uh, another guy is Desmond Ritter in Atlanta. I think there's going to be a, a louder voice calling for him. Mariota is a nice quarterback, but Mariota, we know who he is. And so as long as Atlanta continues to lose and, um, you know, struggle on offense, I think the calls for Desmond Ritter is going to get a little bit louder. Another guy who kind of snuck under the radar um, kind of throughout the last several weeks, months, is, uh, you know, especially since the combine, he peaked at the combine was Malik Willis. In Tennessee. Tennessee is a struggle fest right now. And again, Ryan Tannehill, we know what he is. Malik Willis got a little bit of PT on Monday night in a blowout against the Bills. It wouldn't surprise me if Tennessee makes the move to Malik Willis just to kind of see what kind of athlete they have. Um, he was definitely a run first quarterback last night, but mostly running for his life against a very good Bills team. So 
I think Malik Willis might be a sneaky guy too. Again, these are numbered cards. These are autos. These are patch autos. Any of the rookie cards that you see out there that you think could potentially have some value. When I say value, I'm talking about buying low and selling for, you know, two to five X. You are not looking about, you're not going to get rich doing all this stuff, guys. I'm, I'm just telling you. But if you can increase some of the money that you're, you're, you're bringing in so you can maybe buy uh, more cards with the one card that you flipped, that's kind of my strategy. So uh, those are three guys that are rookies that could potentially see the field sooner rather than later. And my last guy, I brought it up last year or last week, was Jordan Love. And that's because I thought Aaron Rodgers was washed. I'm still kind of bullish on, on Jordan Love. I think he is going to have an opportunity to take over a very good Green Bay team. They have a lot of those young receivers. Eventually, they're going to mature. And guess who's going to throw those guys the ball when they mature? Jordan Love. Do I think Jordan Love has the makings of, uh, you know, a Hall of Fame type quarterback like Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers? Not right now, but Green Bay is going to be a good situation for any quarterback quarterback that takes over for Aaron Rodgers. And until that is told otherwise that it's not Jordan Love, that's why I'm buying Jordan Love cards right now. And that's why I'm looking for some of those uh, lower priced value cards of his because eventually I think he gets a chance and I think his cards will bounce a little bit, and that's when you sell. All right, folks, that is my trending Tuesday of this week two NFL season recap. I'd love to hear from you in the YouTube comments. What do you think? Are you, th are you following the NFL?